Today we will be talking about the units and dimension which are again very important aspect of the mathematical modeling. So, how do you define the unit? So, you can say that unit is any standard used for comparison in measurements. So, basically some standard reference is required to express the result of the measurement of certain quantity. For example, if I say huge amount of rice or large amount of grain in the godown, this gives you a vague idea. So, I need to say 30 kilograms of rice or 50 kilograms of grain. So, that gives you a specific idea that how much amount of rice or grain is stored in the godown. So, that is where the units came. So, the first system it is called the CGS system. It was proposed by this German mathematician Gauss in 1832. The full name as you can see Carl Friedrich Gauss. So, but Gauss chose these units in terms of this millimeter, milligram and seconds. Later on in 1873, there is a committee of the British Association for Advancement of Science which includes famous physicists like James Maxwell, William Thomson. They recommend that no, it should be the adoption of centimeter, gram and seconds as the fundamental units and hence the name CGS system. The next system is this MKS system. So, this was proposed by Professor Giovanni Giorgi and the M stands for the meter, K for the kilogram and S for the seconds. But this was again promoted and popularized by the electrical engineer George A. Campbell. We now move into our next metric system or system of measurements namely the SI system that is the international system of units. So, this SI system it came into existence in 1960 and again the credit goes to Giovanni Giorgi. So, the fundamental units uh, in the SI system are meter, this dimension is L and is the length, then the kilogram which denotes the mass, and the dimension is given by M, then second which denotes the time, the dimension is given by T. Then we have four more, one is the electric current, it is measured in ampere and the dimension is A, the temperature measured in Kelvin and the dimension is K, luminous intensity it is candela and the dimension is CD and the amount of substance which gives the mole and the dimension is mole. So, with this seven fundamental units we form this SI system. And this SI system is the most widely used system of measurements. Now, how do you define this dimension? So, this dimension of this physical quantity it means that the power to which the fundamental unit or units can be raised to obtain the unit of that quantity. In a more simplification in simplified language it means that a physical quantity that can be expressed in terms of the fundamental quantities or namely the mass, the length and the time. For example, if I take say volt, the unit of volt is kg meter square per second cube per light intensity. If I take the dimension, it is m l square t to the power minus 3 ampere per ampere, so a to the power minus 1. Now, let us calculate the dimension of few known quantities. The very first is acceleration. So, we know that is velocity by time. The square bracket is the notation for the dimension. So, this will be equal to the dimension of velocity 
by dimension of time. And velocity we know that is length per unit time or distance per unit time. So, distance which is the length per unit time which is t to the power minus 1 divided by time. So, it is L t minus 2. So, that is the acceleration, the dimension of the acceleration. Next, we have force. So, force is mass into acceleration and this can be written as the dimension of mass multiplied by the dimension of acceleration. The dimension of mass is m and dimension of acceleration we have already calculated. So, L t minus 2. So, force will have the dimension m L t minus 2. Then work or work done that is defined as the force into distance. So, the force already you have calculated that is dimension of force multiplied by dimension of distance and that is equal to m l t to the power minus 2 which is the dimension of force and multiplied by dimension of distance which is l. So, it is m l square t minus 2. Now, the specific gravity. So, you can see it is defined as the mass of the body divided by mass of equal volume of water. So, if I write them as mass of the body divided by mass of equal volume of water, both of them will be m by m which results in a pure number 1 and hence it is dimensionless. So, the specific gravity is dimensionless. Now, what do you mean by dimensionally homogeneous? So, in mathematical modeling, you will be forming models which will be consisting of differential equation or difference equation. Now, you have a left hand side and you have a right hand side of the equation. So, the dimension of the left hand side must be equal to the dimension of the right hand side. If you get that, then it is said dimensionally homogeneous. Let us take an example. Say a body is moving in a straight line with a force proportional to the cube of its velocity. So, if I write it f to be the force, it varies as the cube of the velocity. So, I can write this as f is equal to some k times v cube where k is the constant of proportionality. Now, I take the dimension on both sides that is dimension of force equal to dimension of k into v cube which I can write as dimension of k and dimension of v cube. So, after this step I am going to write the dimension of the force. So, force is mass into acceleration. I take the dimension, this is the dimension of k and this is the dimension of velocity cube. So, L t minus 1 to the power 3. The dimension of mass, dimension of acceleration, I do not know the dimension of k and L cube t minus 3. So, if I simplify them, I will get k equal to m l minus 2 into t. So, this is the dimension of this proportionality constant k and if I want to write the unit, the unit is going to be kg per meter square second. So, that is how we, we solve an equation and find the dimensions using the definition of dimensionally homogeneous. Next, we calculate the dimension of energy. 
Now we have the famous equation E equal to mc square given by Albert Einstein where E is the energy, m is the mass and c is the velocity of light. So if you want to take the dimension, so this dimension of E will be the dimension of mass and dimension of the speed of light which is the velocity square. So this is given by m, this is the velocity and square. This gives m l 2 t minus 2. So this is the dimension of energy. Now there are various forms of energy, say potential energy. So potential energy we know that it is mgh. So if you take the dimension of potential energy, this dimension of m, dimension of acceleration due to gravity and dimension of height. This is denoted by m, this is acceleration m l minus 2 and height is another length. So this comes to m l 2 t minus 2 which is same as this. If you take the kinetic energy, which is half m v square, so the dimension of the kinetic energy is, so if you consider half m, it is same, the dimension remains the mass. So it is the dimension of half m and the velocity square. So this gives the dimension m, this is l t minus 1 square which is m l square t minus 2, again which is same. Similarly, if you consider the heat energy which is q denoted by, so the dimension of the heat energy will also be m l 2 n minus 2. So any form of energy will have the same dimension which is m l square t to the power minus 2. Now if in any model you come across a term like cos alpha t or e to the power alpha t where t stands for time and you want to make find the dimension of alpha such that this quantity is dimensionless then what you have to do. So if you notice you have say cos alpha t. So t is time which has the dimension of capital T and alpha t has to be dimensionless. So alpha must have the dimension such that it cancels with this t and hence this has to be 1 by t. So alpha must have the dimension t to the power minus 1 such that it becomes dimensionless. Similarly, here also the same thing, you have to put the alpha as 1 by t such that the quantity alpha t is dimensionless. If the equation involves a derivative, then the dimensions of the derivative are given by, by the ratio of the dimensions because the derivative is the limiting ratio of the two quantities. So if you recall, uh, we have dy dx that is equal to limit delta x tends to 0, is delta y by delta x is the definition of the limit. So it, you can see it is the limiting ratio of two quantities delta y by delta x. If you want to calculate the dimension of dv dt, so this will be equal to the dimension of the velocity divided by the dimension of time. So dimension of velocity by dimension of time and velocity we know l t minus 1 
time is t and hence this is L t minus 2. So, if you notice this is rate of change of velocity which is the acceleration and hence you get the dimension of the acceleration. The next is del v del x. So, this is equal to the dimension of v by dimension of x. So, L t minus 1 by L. So, this length cancels and you get the dimension as t minus 1. The next one is del 2 v del x square which is again dimension of v by dimension of x square. This is L t minus 1 by L square and you get L minus 1 t minus 1. Next we have del u del x where u is the temperature. So, here you have the dimension of the temperature by the dimension of x and dimension of temperature is k and this is L. So, the dimension overall is L minus 1 k del 2u del x square. This is dimension of u by dimension of x square which is equal to k by L square. So, L minus 2 k. Now, these two quantities may be added if they have the same dimension and quantities of different dimension can be multiplied or divided. These are the one of the properties. Now, PO numbers are dimensionless and if you multiply any physical quantity by a PO number that does not change its dimension. Now, the dimension of this integral a to b p d q, it is given by dimension of p multiplied by dimension of q and the important index law which says that if a a quantity a physical quantity have the dimension m to the power a 1, l to the power b 1 and t to the power c 1, whereas another physical quantity b has the dimension m to the power a 2, l to the power b 2, t to the power c 2, then by index law the dimension of a b is going to be m to the power a 1 plus a 2, l to the power b 1 plus b 2 and t to the power c 1 plus c 2. Now, let us take an example. You have given a differential equation dp dr equal to rho v by r square, where p is your pressure, rho is your density, r is your radial distance and v is the velocity. You have to check if the equation is dimensionally homogeneous or not. That is the dimension of the left hand side must be equal to the dimension of the right hand side. So, let us start with the pressure. So, that you have to write the definition of pressure which is force by area. Now, force you know mass into acceleration. So, mass into acceleration divided by area. Now, if I take the dimension of the pressure which is dimension of force by direction of area and the dimension of this quantity. So, mass is m acceleration L t minus 2 and area is L square. So, I get the dimension of pressure as m L to the power minus 1 t to the power minus 2. Next comes the density rho. So, density is mass by volume. So, the dimension of density is dimension of mass by dimension of volume which is m by L cube. So, m L to the power minus 3. Dimension of velocity we already have done. Velocity is distance per unit time and the dimension of r which is again the radial distance which is L. 
So once you get the dimension of all this, let's start with the left hand side, that is dp dr. So dimension of this is going to be dimension of p by dimension of r, which is equal to now dimension of p already have calculated, which is m l minus 1 t minus 2 divided by l. So it is m l to the power minus 2 t to the power minus 2. Let us take the right hand side, which is rho v by r square. So the rho is m l minus cube, dimension of v is l t minus 1, dimension of r is sorry r square is l square and we get m l minus 4 t minus 1. So as you can see the dimension of the left hand side and the dimension of right hand side they are not equal and hence the equation is not dimensionally homogeneous. Let us take another example. So the problem is uh, distance travelled by a particle in time t is given by some equation. You have to find the dimension of a, b, c and d. Obviously we will be using the definition of dimensionally homogeneous. So I write the relation or the equation, this is a plus b t plus c t square plus d t cube. S is the distance, t is the time, I do not know what a, b, c, d's are, I have to find their dimensions. So I take the dimension of S is equal to dimension of A plus dimension of B T plus dimension of C T square plus dimension of D T cube. Now S is the distance, so I know it is the length L, the dimension. A I write like this, T is the time, so I know T is the dimension here t square and here t cube. Now if this equation has to be dimensionally homogeneous, the dimension of the left hand side must be equal to the dimension of the right hand side. As you can see, the dimension of the left hand side is L and the dimension of the right hand side, if A has to be L, then it is dimensionally homogeneous. Now if this quantity has to be L, then the dimension of B has to be L t minus 1, so that if you multiply it by t, it gives you L. With the similar logic, the dimension of C has to be L t minus 2, so that if you multiply by t square, the dimension is L. And similarly, the dimension of D is L t minus 3, so that if you multiply by t cube, it is dimension L. So to maintain that the equation is dimensionally homogeneous, the dimension of A has to be L, dimension of B has to be L t minus 1, dimension of C L t minus 2 and dimension of D L t minus 3. We next look into this problem where we have this Fourier's law which relates the heat flux to the temperature gradient and is given by this equation, where your J is the heat flux, U is the temperature and X denotes the distance. We have to determine the dimension of alpha. Now we first define what is this uh, heat flux. So heat flux J is the heat energy per unit area per unit time. So if I write the dimension of J, it is the heat energy divided by per unit area per unit time. 
Now, energy I can put the value from the previous calculation, but let me show you another way. So, energy is also work done divided by the dimension of area and dimension of time. So, work done is force multiplied by distance. divided by the dimension of area and dimension of time. So, this is equal to dimension of force, dimension of distance by dimension of area and dimension of time. Then force is mass into acceleration. So, m l t minus 2, distance is L, area is length square and time is T. So, if you simplify this, you will get M T minus 3. Now, if I take this equation, this will give me dimension of J equal to dimension of alpha, I am ignoring the negative sign, then dimension of del u del x, which is dimension of alpha, dimension of temperature u and dimension of x. So, this gives dimension of j is m t minus 3 which is equal to dimension of alpha, which I have to find, dimension of temperature, which is k, and dimension of x, which is l. So, I get dimension of alpha is equal to m l t minus 3 k minus 1. So, this gives me the dimension of alpha dimensional analysis. So, first we define what is a dimensional equation. So, when the dimension of a quantity is obtained and it is expressed in the form of an equation, that equation is simply called the dimensional equation. And then what is dimensional analysis? So, it is a method of studying the relationship between a physical quantities with the help of dimensions and units of measurements. For example, if we consider the frequency of a stretched string. Now, that depends on the tension of the stretch string, the length of the stretch string and the mass per unit length of the string. If you want to find a formula or want to find a relation between the frequency and the tension, the length and the mass per unit length of the string, here where this dimensional analysis comes. So, how we proceed? Let us take the example that consider the frequency n that depends on the tension T s, the length L and the mass per unit length. So, I can write frequency n some constant k, the tension T s whole to the power a, the length L whole to the power b and mass per unit length whole to the power c. Now, you have to be very careful here, it is still that mass per unit length while calculating its dimension, because it is not only mass, it is mass per unit length. If I now calculate the uh, dimension of this tension, so tension, it is nothing but force, which is mass into acceleration. So, mass multiplied by L t minus 2. The length L is L, but mass per unit length. So, dimension of m is going to be mass per unit length. So, m L minus 1. And it is the frequency, the frequency which means vibration per unit time. So, 
your dimension of n it is going to be t to the power minus 1. So, vibration per unit time. Now, I need to find the values of these real numbers a, b and c and I will be using the index law. So, I take the dimension of the quantities and m to the power c. Now, this is again l k is dimensionless, T s is m l t to the power minus 2 to the power a, dimension of l is l to the power b and m is m l minus 1 to the power c. If I simplify, it is m to the power a plus c, l to the power a plus b plus c and t to the power minus 2a. This is per time, this is m to the power 0 and l to the power 0 just for the sake of understanding. So, if I use the index law and equate the power from both sides, I will choose this one first. So, I can get minus 2a is equal to minus 1 which gives me a equal to half. Then I choose this one which gives a plus c equal to 0 that is c equal to minus a that is minus half. So, I got the value of a and I got the value of c and finally a plus b plus this is minus c. So, a plus b minus c equal to 0. So, the value of b is c minus a. So, c is minus half, a is half and the answer is minus 1. So, now you put these values here, you get n equal to k times T s to the power a which is half l to the power b which is minus 1 and m to the power c which is minus half. And if I simplify a bit, it is k by l t s by m square root of that. So, this is the formula or the relation between the frequency n which depends on the tension, the length and the mass per unit length. With that, we come to the end of our today's lecture on units and dimension. In our next lecture, we will be hearing about the scaling. So, using this scaling, we can make a equation dimensionless, which is again a very important aspect of mathematical modeling. By making an equation dimensionless, you can reduce the number of parameters and also it helps in the numerical solutions. Uh, of the model, it makes it error free. So, till then, bye bye.